After two years on board Pelagic Australis, faithfully taking us to some of the most remote places on this planet, her time in the high latitudes as an expedition yacht was coming to an end. She was about to embark on a new career and we were the crew to hand her over to her new owners. Watch this film to find out which global organisation she now belonged to and sail with us as we journey into new waters. Okay, so Chris, we've got reason to celebrate this evening, haven't we? Yeah, a bit of celebration, but also a bit of sadness. We're still staying on Pelagic Australis, but she's been sold and this was our last day with Skip. Yeah, so Pelagic Australis will have a new career. But we are jumping ahead here. First Pelagic Australis was lifted at the Synchrolift in Cape Town for hull inspection to take place. Once two bow and two stern lines were secured, we were past another line which was tensioned just after the stern with a pendulum at the centre. Under skipped guidance, the line handlers then moved Pelagic Australis directly into the centre of the dock. Next, the platform underneath Pelagic Australis was raised until she was high and dry. We then removed all mooring lines again and the tractor pulled the whole platform out and moved her into her spot in the yard. Basic technology, but really works, eh? Yeah, it's incredible. About to go sideways. Once the platform was in position, the tractor pushed Pelagic Australis backwards into the spot where she would stay for the duration of the survey. The yard workers then removed the frame from underneath her and with the help of a ladder we were able to step off. With the keel and rudder up, Pelagic Australis only draws 1.8 meters. This was the first time she had been out of the water since June 2019. We did however dive her hull twice, to inspect her hull, rudder and propeller for damage, as well as to check the antifoul and the anodes. For two years in the water, her hull looked pretty good. Nevertheless, the yard guys gave her a quick wash with a pressure washer and a brush. We expected some welding to be done, so Sophie and I had to disconnect all the batteries and alternators to prevent any potential damage. Uh, negative of the alternator. Oops. Is not to lose all the, washers. Okay. the alternator for the house batteries was easily accessible, but the one for the engine starter battery was somewhat more challenging. So someone who could fit in the small gap between the engine and the wall was needed. Okay. Okay. Now tape it onto the other one. Okay. Both together. This side? Yeah. And then we can take the other one off and then the negative. It was negative. Oh, sorry, the positive. Which one is? Set on there, the red. Is it? This one. Oh, in there. Yeah. Once our jobs were done, we left her in the hands of the surveyor for the rest of the day. Okay, so Chris, we're off to work, yep. but in slightly different clothing today. <laughs> yeah, going to the yard, we hauled out the larger yesterday. Yeah. She's on the dry and survey did this inspection. Um, we conclude they don't have to weld, so by looks of it, we're going back in today sometime. 
and it was a massive operation. Yep. We've got to get our hard hats ready. Yeah, hard hats for us. Okay. And we'll show you Pelagic from underneath. Morning. underneath which um, the first time I've seen it although you've seen it a number of times. This is the propeller which um, caused the change in Antarctica underwater um, and then we had it shipped off in Chile and um, to be repaired. Well Chris put a spare one on. So this is um, this is actually spare and the one that was bent and shipped back to us is now Living up forward in the water. So it's cool to see it underneath. Yeah, come up on deck. Morning tour. How is the boat sitting? <laughs> Sleep well. <laughs> yeah. So this is the new one. That's the old one. You can see it. Well, can you want to say what it is? Uh, it's a propeller shaft anode. Yeah. Yep. And for the non-sailors that we uh, have watching? It, so it's a lesser metal, so this will corrode before the propeller or the shaft starts corroding. Yeah, and this one was actually originally this size. Um, so yeah. yeah, that's worn down. So it's time to replace it. And um, but for some people they may point out that this one's already got some corrosion on it. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. It's like it's still pretty big. Yeah, it's not too bad. Big sleeve. It's over. And After all this was done, Pelagic was lowered down on the platform. Like a sea creature, returning to its habitat, Pelagic sat comfortably back in the water. The survey was a success. For the last time, Skip Novak took her helm and moored her up on her berth in East Quay. One last job was to carry out a thorough rig check. Chris, hang on, what are you carrying there? So this is a bar that goes um, through the mast and then the jacks, mast jacks go underneath yeah. and we pump up the whole mast. Yeah, bloody hell. <laughs> but hang on, we did that twice before in the Falklands. Yeah, we did that before the Falklands. Yeah. Um, that was kind of epic before the charter. So it goes through. Hang on. Yeah. Turned, sit. Mass checks on the knees. Yep, let's move that. Yep. Open these ones. Once the pressure is on the bar, the plates can be removed, the pump be released and therefore the rig is slack and can be tuned. With the survey complete, Pelagic Australis was about to change ownership after 18 years in the high latitudes. And now the celebrations could commence. A ceremony took place to mark the handover between Skip Novak and Pelagic's new owners, Greenpeace.
Pelagic Australis kept her name for the duration of the voyage, but her home port was already being changed. Pelagic is now going up to Holland. The new skip and mate, they are already down here in Cape Town. We're giving them a handover, so we're staying as skip and mate for the duration of the delivery. They can learn the boat, see how everything works on Pelagic. And then once we arrive in Holland, we're stepping off. And that's our final day on Pelagic Australis. We're working for Greenpeace <coughs> for about two months as we yeah. sail up. Um, we may even be stopping at some cool places along the way. One mm -hmm. of them being St. Helena, which you've been to. And Chris has the most amazing stories from there. So I hope I have my own stories. And then another island, but I'm not sure what I can say. Yeah, um, so we're looking at Ascension Island and maybe the Azores, but that's obviously all depending on COVID and our schedule and how we're getting on, yeah? Yeah, or if we run out of fresh fruit and veg, maybe we'll stop along the way, because Pelagic mm -hmm. doesn't have a fridge. Normally sailing in the high latitudes, so they'll just keep cool enough. But we're going to be yeah. sailing into across the equator, um, into really warm waters. So we'll see how we fare. We may have to make some pit stops along the way. What, Chris, what were you doing there? Um, Maria is just putting the rudder bolt in, um, which is a big... Can I try to find or...? Yeah, as tight as you can by hand. Okay. <laughs> With the keel and rudder down and locked, Sophie gave a brief on how to get off the pontoon. Bim on the stern line. And Maria and Eric managing the lines up forward. Yes, it's a free. You can then get a fender and just stand by on the port side with the fender, the break of the fender. So it will say stand by on the bow, stand by on the stern, stand by on the spring, slip the bow, slip the stern, slip the spring. Okay, in that order. And so, on an early morning in May 2021, we slipped her lines for her final voyage as Pelagic Australis. With Stable Mountain in the background, we made our way out of the harbour. As with every sailing voyage, the first step was hoisting the mainsail. Soon after, the headsails followed, and we were on our way to Amsterdam, 7,000 nautical miles north. Join us in part two, sailing Pelagic Australis a great distance of 7,000 nautical miles, departing from Cape Town, stopping in St Helena, where Covid thwarted our plans, then on to Ascension Island, where we encounter the mighty Galapagos shark and watch tiny turtle hatchlings make their first scramble for the sea, as well as a stop in the Azores, where we found a new companion, Finally arriving in Amsterdam, where, after another ceremony, we finally step off and hand over our faithful companion, Pelagic Astralis, to Greenpeace. If you enjoyed this film, please do like and subscribe to our channel. We would really appreciate it. If you would like to support our work, you can do so via the Super Thanks button with a one-off donation or check out our Patreon page for early access and extra content. We would love it if you would like to follow our Season Summit social media accounts, as well as our personal wildlife photography accounts on Instagram. 
For this, check out the links in the video description.